Hello everyone! In this video, I will show you how to use index match and offset functions. You will also see how powerful it becomes when used in combination. For example, I will show how you can make some nice dynamic charts like this using match index and offset functions. I can very easily change the charts being displayed here by altering the category selection with the help of this dropdown. Here I can see the nutritional profile of any food item with the help of this dropdown. Or here I can switch charts with a click of a button. I will show you how to do all of these, but let's start with the basics first. We will start with the index function. Here I have prepared a student score sheet. It contains scores of 10 students across four subjects, namely maths, science, English, economics. On the left and on the top of this bordered area, you are seeing these numbers. These are just for visual guidance for the row and column number of the individual score in this grid. Notice that row number and column number are with respect to this grid containing scores. For example, this score of 91 lies in this cell with row 3 and column 2 with respect to this score grid. But in absolute terms, its row number is 5 and column number is 4. In the index function, you will have to provide row number and column number relative to the provided range. Say, for example, I want a score of Charlie in economics. For this, I will write index and then provide this range as reference. For row, I will have to pass 3. And for column, I will have to pass 4. Now hit enter. And we got this 85. Now come back to this formula again. If you notice, the row and the column parameters are surrounded by brackets. This tells that it is optional. Let's try skipping the row and column parameters. Here you see, we got the entire reference range. Now let's skip the column. This time, we got the entire row. In the same way, if we skip the row parameter like this, we will get the entire column for the past column number. Later, I will show you how this will become very useful when used in combination with the match function. In nutshell, the index function can give you the entire reference range, or the entire column, or the entire row, or intersection of the given row and column number. Now let's move to the match function. Match function allows us to get the match position of a search key in a given range. One thing to keep in mind is that the search range has to be one-dimensional, and the return type will be integer. If I expand this mini docs, you will notice it requires three parameters. Search key, range, and an optional parameter called search type. For exact matching, you need to provide zero and one for finding the largest value less than or equal to in the list that is sorted in ascending order, and minus one to find the smallest value greater than or equal to the search key in the list that is sorted in descending order. Let's say I want to search for David Kim. I would expect the output to be five. Let me write the formula. I will provide the search key, David Kim, search range, B3 to B12, and match type, zero for exact matching. Similarly, when searched for economics, I should get four. Instead of typing the search key inside the function, I could have referenced it like this also. If I change this, the output also changes. Moving on to offset function. 
offset function takes a cell or a range of cells and returns another cell or range that is offsetted by a certain amount, row-wise or column-wise. It also lets you resize the output range. Let me read through this mini-doc. It requires five parameters, out of which two are optional. Cell reference. The number of rows to offset by. The number of columns to offset. Height and width of the output range. Say I want to take this cell B2. And I want this range containing the subject category as output. For achieving that, I will have to offset it by one column. It has to be four column wide and one row in height. Let me write the formula accordingly. Similarly, if I want the students, then I will have to offset the cell B two by one row and provide a height of 10 rows. If I want the entire score grid, then I will have to offset this cell B two by one row and one column and height of 10 rows and width of four columns. Next, we will see how to use them in combination. Here in this sheet, we will first find the match position of a given student and then spill their scores across different subjects. So I will input the student name in this cell. On the right, I will find the match position like this. Now I will use the index function here to get the scores. I will start by typing index and then provide the score grid as a reference range. And for the moment, let's use two as row number. This gives us the scores of the second student. Now let's replace two with the above calculated match position. Now, if I change the student name, our scorecard will also change. I can make a dropdown in this cell by going to Data, then Data Validation, and then click Add Rule. In the criteria, choose Dropdown from a range, and provide the student's range as a dropdown range. Now I can get the scores of any student by changing the student like this. Now let's combine offset with index function. In this cell, I will enter index number. And here I can get the scores of a single student across different subjects using the above index number. Now we can increment or decrement this index number by some kind of button to enable switching of the scores. This concept can be utilized in making switchable charts that will be shown to you in a while. Now, time to explain the food chart. This is making use of this food data and nutrients data. It has four different categories of items, and it lists calories of different items. In the Nutrients Data tab, I have got nutritional values of different food items. Here I have this dropdown that contains a list of all categories. Let me uncover the data for this chart. If you notice here, I have used index, match, and offset functions. 
First, I am matching the value picked from the dropdown in the top row in Food Data tab. The search range is A1 to H1. Let's say I match fruits, then I will get 3 as its position in the range. Then I provide this 3 as the column number to the index function. And this entire data region from A1 to H11 becomes the reference range for the index function so that it will return this range containing fruits. Now, I use the offset function to resize this output range from the index function. I will provide 2 for the width in the offset function so that it includes calories also. So this way, when I change the selection, our entire chart data changes, which in turn changes our chart. In the next tab, I have inserted two arrow buttons to switch the displayed chart. It simply increments or decrements this value. And this value is fed into this index function as column number. And then using offset, we include the calories range too. I have assigned a small script to these arrow buttons. Let me show that to you. You can open the editor by clicking Extensions and then App Script. Here you will see the assigned functions. It reads the value of the cell C3. If the value is greater than 6 or less than 2, it returns. Otherwise, it either increments it or decrements it. Please feel free to copy this spreadsheet from the link provided in the description below. Please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.